Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. Those of you who watch my videos but not all the way to the end might not know that I'm now an affiliate of Goldspot Pens. And if you shop on Goldspot using the link in my description below, you'll be supporting my channel at no extra cost to you. Now, I've never actually received anything from Goldspot before, but today's fountain pen was provided by Goldspot Pens as a thank you for my agreeing to be an affiliate. They asked me to choose a Levin model that they could provide for me for review, and I chose this, Levin 325 in ocean blue. I've owned one other Levin fountain pen, and it was a Levin skeleton. It was a very cool fountain pen, and you can see my review of it by clicking right up here. But even before I bought the skeleton, which I got because I thought it would be cool at Halloween, and it's a great match with my Pelican Golden Barrel ink, even before that pen, I had been eyeing the LeBan 325. The photos of the pen make it look very attractive, but I was very impressed when I took it out of the box and saw it in real life. It's much more substantial and beautiful in person. So let's take a look at it right now. <music> Now, I've been uh, bugging you folks for months about me being an affiliate of Goldspot Pens online. Well, Goldspot has come through with a pen for me uh, in recognition of me being an affiliate. They gave me a choice of Laban pens to, uh, to review and to keep, and the boxes finally arrived. So here is the package, and let's open it up to see what it is. Wow, I had to take that off camera and rip the box to shreds. There is a magazine in here. And there is the box with the pen. It's a catalog for Gold Spot. Interesting in this day of online shopping and digital websites and so forth to actually see a paper catalog very interesting i'll give that a look let's open this up there's the box white sleeve leban pen corp and this is leban 325 fountain pen in ocean blue with a medium point leban crest on the other side take the sleeve off we have this beautiful royal blue box with an orange pull tab and it comes out like a drawer there's the pen oh even without touching it i notice it's much nicer than what i expected from the photos there's a bookmark and let's see if there's anything underneath yes levant refilling your soul by writing international guarantee and it's a three-year warranty against failures due to faulty materials and workmanship. And let's take a look at the pen. Well, isn't that nice? Look at that. Lavender and ice blue. But this is the part that really surprised me. In the photos, they kind of look just sort of uh, beige. But this is much more substantial than what I expected from the photos. That's a very nice, almost a wood grain type pattern. Let's see if I can get a little closer. So you can see that beautiful graining in there. Look at that. That's much more interesting than in the photos. And the section matches that. So I'll have to figure out whether that is a Yovo or a Bach. I believe it's a Yovo nib. A medium. I asked for a medium. Black plastic feed. And it does say Germany on there because the nib is made in Germany. But the pen is from Taiwan. So LeBan are made in Taiwan. This is a cartridge converter pen. And there's the LeBan converter. But that's very comfortable in the hand. So I look forward to cleaning this pen out, filling it with some ink, and then doing a review. The LeBan 325. And what I'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen, show some size comparisons, some measurements, and then provide a writing sample. After the writing sample, please stay tuned as I will talk about what I like 
and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen. Laban pens are manufactured and the company is based in Taiwan. Laban pens was founded in 1981 by John Hugh and his brother Charles. They make fountain pens, ballpoints, and rollerballs. Overall, this is a substantial pen. As I said in the unboxing, I was surprised at how robust this pen is. Yes, it's acrylic, but the acrylic is somehow thicker and more luxurious than either I had expected or seen on an Asian fountain pen. This creamy white isn't just white, it has a pseudo wood grain and depth, and the dark veins are slightly chatoyant and glitter as well. Let's see if I can get in closer to give you a better view of that grain. It really is quite lovely. It's very reminiscent of one of my favorite acrylic finishes from Pen BBS, and they call it Cedar. Here is my first Pen BBS fountain pen in Cedar. It's a 308. The Cedar acrylic comes up so rarely that I had to get another one in a 480 when it popped up on Etsy. The grain and the gold veins are much wider on the Laban. Then there is this beautiful iced blue cracked ice. It's a lovely finish. I have some similar acrylic resin on my Jinhao 100 Centennial, although the Laban has some nice lavenders and deeper blues than the cool blue of the Jinhao. Overall, the pen is roughly cigar shaped, at least on the bottom finial. The top is more a rounded cylinder. From the top, we see an embedded gold colored metal medallion of the Laban logo crest with an L and laurel leaves. It is my privilege to extend a laurel and hearty handshake to our new... I like laurel leaves. The rounded cap then has two embedded gold metal rings. These are not just thin bands applied over the acrylic. The acrylic actually has channels milled into it where the bands sit. The bands are slightly convex and you can just feel them softly rise above the acrylic. It's a very nice attention to detail here. I think these three layers of acrylic actually sandwich the clip structure inside the cap, and the whole thing is held together with a screw on the bottom of that cap medallion, and then it's sealed inside the cap with a silicone seal. We'll see that in a moment. The elegantly shaped gold metal clip extends from the cap and is very nicely springy and usable. Another nice touch. The cap curves up to a large domed cap band that has Laban laser engraved on the front. This band is not embedded into the acrylic. The cap is nicely rounded down to the barrel which begins with another two gold metal ring sandwich of the ivory resin and then the cracked ice acrylic of the barrel which tapers very slightly all the way down to another gold metal ring which separates the barrel from the ivory acrylic end finial. The cap unscrews with almost two complete turns to reveal a tapering acrylic section of the same acrylic as the cap and end finial and has a nice flare towards the number six size steel Bach medium nib and black plastic feed. I said in the unboxing I thought this nib was a Yovo, but it is indeed a Bach. Let's look closer at this nib. It has some nice scroll work and then 3952 Laban, Germany, and an M for medium. I don't know what's up with that number on the nib, not matching the model number of the pen. The Laban skeleton has a really nicely engraved nib with Laban and the Laban L with the Laurel Leaves logo. So I don't know what's going on there. The nib and feet are part of a nib assembly that unscrews for maintenance or replacement. The section unscrews to reveal a gold metal nozzle and the included Laban standard international converter with Laban in script, which is another nice touch. The inside of the barrel shows a metal insert for the threads to mesh with the section, so they are metal on metal. Again, another nice touch. The inside of the cap shows there's no cap liner or step milled into it to meet up with the section, but you can see that screw from the medallion that holds the top cap together with the clip, and it's all sealed in a silicone membrane. Unposted, the pen is very comfortable in the hand. The section is lovely, and those threads are smooth and unobtrusive. The cap does not post, as those acrylic threads of the cap do not go over that ring. Unposted, the pen is very comfortable in the hand, 
and the section is lovely and those threads are smooth and unobtrusive this pen retails on gold spot pens for 97 dollars 99 us and is available in nine color finishes this ocean blue aqua lagoon black ivory flame forest green secura snow sun orange and wisteria purple and they have five nib options extra fine fine medium broad and a 1.5 millimeter stub only the ocean blue seems to be priced at 97.99 while the other colors are 127 dollars and 95 cents now let's look at some size comparisons and here is the Le Bain 325 in ocean blue with a Leonardo Momento Zero Grande a Jinhao X159 an Opus 88 Bella and a Pilot Metropolitan for scale now let's look at them posted and here they are posted and of course the Le Bain 325 does not post but the Leonardo Momento Zero Grande does post the Jinhao posts even better the Opus 88 Bella posts but makes it a very large pen and you can see by the scale how big these pens are now let's look at them unposted and here they are unposted and again these are big pens as you can see from the scale of the Metro the Opus 88 is very fat indeed but the best comparison I think is between the Levan 325 and the Jinhao X159 they both have the same length the Jinhao X159 is slightly girthier and the section taper is a little bit more but you can see that the Levan 325 isn't that far off of a Momento Zero Grande which is a big pen now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample And we're back with the writing portion of the review this is Claire Fontaine 90 GSM paper and this is the Laban or Laban 325 and it has a number six size Bach steel medium nib and let's check the wetness nicely wet right out of the box and it is glassy smooth with just a hint of feedback I would say the nib is perfect and the ink today is Iroshizuku Ama Iro, which I think is a really nice match with this particular shade of blue in the acrylic and here are some close matches to this ink from inkswatch.com as to line variation well you can push out a little bit but it's a stiff steel nib and the line this nib makes is 0.6 millimeters which is a western medium or a Japanese medium to broad and for our quote And for some reverse writing. It's actually quite smooth. A lot drier and thinner, but it works. And for some quick writing. no issues whatsoever nicely wet and that feed keeps up so what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen well first I have to say that I was not expecting a pen 
this big and substantial. Why did you get it so big? A, that's what she said. <laughs> Come on. In all of the photos I've seen of this model, I don't think I've ever seen one side by side with a normal size pen. So I was expecting something like the size of this Pen BBS 308. And I was also not expecting to weigh almost twice as much as this Pen BBS 308. Even my Leonardo Momento Zero Grande weighs four grams less than the LeBam 325. And this Leo is a piston filler. Not that the size and heft of this pen are a bad thing. I think the size is nice in my hand and the pen, unposted because it doesn't post, is really nicely balanced. I was also surprised at how incredible this acrylic finish is on this pen. The cracked ice is beautiful, but this ivory with the veins of gold, you just have to see it and feel it as the photos don't really do the pen justice at all. I did expect the quality fit and finish of this pen from Le Bain, however. The Levin Skeleton is a very well-built fountain pen, and I remember being very impressed by it, so I was expecting no less, and got no less, than a superbly built pen from Levin. For the $100 price tag, you get a beautifully finished, well-balanced fountain pen with a glossy, smooth Bach nib. The only criticism I have of this pen is that it does not post at all. The cap weighs a full 14 grams by itself, so maybe it's a good thing it doesn't post. But there are ways to make a cap like this post deeply and not unbalance the pen severely. The Leonardo Momento Zero Grande is a big pen and its cap weighs a full 12 grams. But it does post deeply and securely and the pen is lovely in the hand both posted and unposted. Perhaps if Le Bain slimmed down the cap some and reduced the number of rings and metal in the cap, made the end finial ring flush and allowed the cap to slip over the barrel, it might be a lighter, more well-balanced pen that posted, but those are just thoughts. This is a magnificent fountain pen, and I'm sure LeBant are proud of it, as they should be. But I expect they get a lot more potential customers if the pen posted well, as a non-posting fountain pen is pretty much a deal breaker for many people. I have to note something else here as well, and I'm nitpicking a bit. The only choices are with this white ivory and some color combination on the barrel. That's okay if you like white, beige, or ivory, and I do, in fact, like it. If there was an option for a darker material on this model, burgundy, dark blue, green, black, charcoal, I think more people would love this style of pen and not be shy to pull them out in meetings at the office. Excuse me while I whip this out. <laughs> also, with the off-white section, dipping the pen into the ink to fill it, stains the acrylic. I dip filled this pen once and it's already tinged with blue. From now on I'm going to fill the converter with a syringe to limit the acrylic's exposure to ink. I have the same problem with my Leonardo Ferrari salt. So just a word to the wise. And there you have it. Thanks go out to my friends at Goldspot Pens for providing this pen for review. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And please look in the description for a link to Goldspot Pens and you know the drill. You can also join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month, and I guarantee I'll answer your comments in the comment section, and you'll get cool emojis, badges, and sneak peek unboxing videos as well. And you can also tag me now using the tag at Inquiring Minds. So tag away. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote. I made this. <laughs>